When it comes to lassos in the Master Chief Collection, Halo 3 ODST might actually not be the worst place to start if you've never played a lasso before. Overall, skill-wise, it's definitely not the hardest, and with enough patience and a little bit of skill, you probably can progress your way through this lasso without too much of a problem. Now, of course, we decided to bite the bullet and do Halo 2 and Combat Evolved before doing ODST, with Halo 4 lasso kind of spread out during the process of those ones, but with us trying to get every single achievement in MCC before the campaign release of Halo Infinite, we now not only were trying to get ODST Lasso done, but we were trying to do it on a much shorter timeline, and for the most part, things were going really smooth with the run. However, there's a couple of points that are almost these ridiculous difficulty ramps that serve as choke points before you could just clear this campaign, and those challenges, especially Coastal Highway, ended up being incredibly harder than we had initially anticipated. But nonetheless, ODST was something that we were determined to try to beat lassoed, and this is what ended up happening. First things first, when you're playing ODST Lasso, you actually have the option to choose non-stop action, which means all of those Mombasa Streets levels are skipped and you can still get the achievement. So all we're looking at are the main core levels of ODST. And while the Mombasa Street levels are fun, having that extra challenge just for the fun of it and not for the achievement, not really today's challenge that we were looking to do. So we went into the non-stop Lasso playlist and starting things off, Terry Plaza is a pretty straightforward level. This is a great level to get a good grasp on what lasso in general is kind of like, except there are a few difficult parts. Of course, there's a lot of enemies right away at the get-go of this level, though if you are accurate with your aim, even with not having any type of HUD and having the skull activated that disables your reticle, despite that, you should still be able to get a feel for kind of where the middle of your screen is, or of course, you can always use the tape method or some sort of monitor with a built-in reticle if you need to, to clear this area. So things were off to a pretty good start. We were moving forward. We were careful not to die because once again, the iron skull makes it so that if one person dies, everyone's dead. And then also whenever our health got low, you do have to punch enemies just if you want to gain your stamina back. It doesn't actually do anything for your health, which is a bit different for how the black eye skull is working in ODST compared to other Halo games. And in this case, it's a little bit more challenging, but you can still work around it. Now, now with Teori Plaza, fortunately a lot of the enemies are close quarters, so if you're trying to make a run to the next checkpoint, you can punch a couple of enemies and kind of keep your stamina up before you start just losing your health rapidly. And while things get a little chaotic where the turn here is, where there's a bunch of brutes, we kind of just kept trying over and over again to make a run for it until we eventually managed to survive and get a checkpoint where we all made it. But nonetheless, we're sticking together and doing pretty well as a group at this point. The big challenging part definitely is the open area where all the hunters are and there's a ton of jackals with snipers that can pick you off so by us dying a couple times and then kind of getting a feel where all the enemies were we were able to kind of divide and conquer in taking out some of the long range jackal snipers with our pistols and then we kind of decided we were just gonna keep throwing ourselves at these hunters until one of us could get away and just make a run to the end of the level it wasn't working too well so we kind of switched it a little bit and had had some of the players draw the hunter's attention away from the runner, and then in this case, I believe it was Dim who just made a run straight to the end of the level and triggered the cutscene, thus getting us through Teari Plaza. Okay, next time around, Uplift Reserve wasn't actually that bad at all. In general, there's a pretty chill speedrunning strategy that you can use, and in general, that just lets you glide through the entire level. But in the beginning section, we were a lot more careful because there's a lot going on, and we did did have to be a bit more strategic in how we approach this and went a little bit slower trying to clear this section out before we then pushed up to where the ghost is and we could just fly to the end of the level. So this one wasn't too bad. Kazingo Boulevard did take some coordination from the three of us working our way through this level. Now in this level there are two tanks right away at the beginning and essentially what we did was we made Dim run for the tank while Luke and I ran for cover because we were just kind of these extra 
extra bodies the Covenant could kill, thus putting us all back to the beginning of the level. And once Dim used the tank to clear out a couple of the bigger enemies, then I would make a run over for tank number two, and we would slowly just push through the level using the tanks and just being extra careful. There wasn't really too much extra going on. Now when you get to the big open area where you meet up with Dutch again, this part is really challenging. There's a lot going on, there's banshees, there's wraiths, and there's ghosts, and you kind of have to kill everything, but there also is a third tank that you get access to in this first half of the level that did proved to be really beneficial here and essentially we were careful to make sure all of our tanks were intact so that by the time we got to the third tank we could use a third tank and whilst things were still pretty chaotic in the section we died a lot we had to worry about dutch maybe friendly firing us with the catch skull and just throwing grenades our way things were actually going okay-ish it still was hard but it definitely wasn't some peak challenge like things we had seen in the past we did the glitch where we're able to push one of the tanks over this doorway section and then we get out of the tank and we push the empty tank through, which then lets us bypass a barrier and bring the tank into the final firefight section, which does help a lot. It's not a perfect formula, but it definitely was useful in clearing out the last set of enemies. And from there, we were able to move on to Oni Alpha Site. And this was the first chokehold of ODST's lasso where we ran into quite a few problems. Okay, the first part of this level, not too bad. You run, you hit the bridge, you kind of hide down while one person is up on the laptop and triggers the bridge explosion. No big deal there. Things are going well. Running through this big outdoor open area, though, is a bit more chaotic. Essentially, I had the Spartan laser and I was on hunter duty, which means I had to take out the hunters, which took two Spartan laser shots each all while they're shooting at me and there's also other enemies like brutes that want me dead as well. It was a little bit horrifying and I may have messed up a couple of times but for the most part I actually managed to pull through this part not too badly. Meanwhile Luke and Dim were taking out some of the other bigger enemies and Dim was ready to pick up another Spartan laser as needed to try to take out the wraith that would drop in in the outdoor section as soon as they dropped in. Now the big hard part of this level is this whole section when you're retreating and then when you're actually inside. Now when we're outside just in the falling backstage, you have to still clear quite a few big enemies and that's hard enough. Now we like to use our method of just hiding behind NPCs that have plot armor like Mickey in this case, but Mickey was having a bit of a field day with the catch skull and was just throwing grenades like something I had never seen before. And then sometimes he would run right up to a brute and he would get knocked away by a brute and you would just see Mickey go flying through the air. I did find a rocket launch and Dim suggested I should give the rocket launcher to Mickey so he'd have unlimited ammo, which was a good idea, though it did lead to some really interesting combat when you would watch what he would do. Still, the section was hard and we were stuck here for quite a while, just dying a lot because there's just a lot of enemies and a lot going on. But with the right RNG, eventually we were able to clear out most of the enemies that we needed to to fall back into the indoor section. And then when we got to the indoor section, things were going well for like 30 seconds and then everything wasn't going well all of a sudden. For the most part, the main strategy is to bait all of the enemies to Mickey, who had a rocket launcher, of course, and just let him clear out the enemies. If you remember back to our no-kill run of ODST, we were stuck here for a while too, relying on Mickey to take out all the enemies, and just imagine that, but times 10 because it's now legendary with all skulls on, and we kind of just need Mickey to do work. Fortunately though, we could actually kill some of the brutes and backsmack them where we could. However, it still was this tedious process and this was one of the few levels that we ended up making progress on, getting stuck at this part and calling it quits for the night and coming back to it on another night to just try it again and try to have better luck. But on our second go of this level, we did actually manage to clear out the section and then do the elevator ride up where we had to take out some of the buggers. And the outdoor section isn't as bad as you think it would be. It it is chaotic, but it's nothing beyond just the regular combat that we'd been doing in Lasso up until this point. So we were able to clear this area without too much of an issue once we finally did get to the upper rooftop part of the level. Okay, NMPD HQ was up next, and fortunately enough in ODST, those Jackal Snipers aren't anything like the Halo 2 Jackal Snipers, though they are still pretty aggressive, so you do have to watch out for them. But for the most part, this is a pretty short level. It mostly just contained us trying 
trying to push up, snipe some enemies, and backsmack some brutes where we could. The big challenging part of this level, of course, is that final firefight section, and we did get really unlucky because we broke the missile pod turrets that are in that firefight section, which typically will have unlimited ammo if you don't detach the turrets or break them. We were unlucky and broke them somehow. We didn't really know what we did wrong, but they were broken nonetheless, and we should have just restarted the level honestly at that point because the firefight ended up taking so long without that. We still did good. We weren't completely awful. We hit our shots where we could. We conserved our ammo and picked stuff off. There was this long stretch of time where we thought we might have soft locked the level, which is a rare possibility if you kill a phantom too quickly. And we were stuck there for a long time wondering if we were gonna have to do the whole thing all over again, which we were not wanting to do. But fortunately enough, eventually that last phantom carrying the brutes that need to be dropped in for the level to end did eventually come and we were able to clear this level that ended up being surprisingly easy even without the missile pods. Maybe at this point we're just getting a little bit better at lassos in general, but we're feeling somewhat good about ourselves. Kikawani Station was up next and this early part of the level, you kind of have to go a little bit slow picking off the enemies from afar, but once you get into the Banshees, it does become a bit easier. You can dodge enemies pretty well, and the big thing is just to make sure you're not getting gunned down by some sort of plasma turret, because it just seems like those things are just beastly against Banshees when you're flying around. All in all, this level is very straightforward. You don't even have to fight the Scarab at the end. You just have to open the door, sidestep the Scarab's shots, which are surprisingly predictable, and then just fly to the end and trigger the ending of the level. The one part that is a choke point that can get any player stuck for quite some time, and Dim, Luke, and I were stuck for maybe 40 minutes or so, was the indoor section where you have to activate the switch override inside, and there's a bunch of brutes and brute chieftains. Essentially, you have to grab some beam rifles at the beginning of the level, hold on to those, and use them in this area to try to pick off as many enemies as you can. And, of course, there's some beefy brutes, even a chieftain with invincibility which makes this whole section really, really difficult. Though, if you can kind of grind your way through it and kill all of the enemies, because there's going to be no checkpoints through this whole fighting section, you do have a pretty easy ride to the end of the level. It was just this tedious process of us having to stand all the way to the very back of the room, shooting across, and also trying not to get picked off or killed in the process. We did die a lot, and that probably didn't help the smoothness of this level. Okay, things are moving along. The end of the campaign was in sight. We did know Coastal Highway would be looming in the background, and we were already nervous about that level, but we still had to get through Data Hive first. Now, Data Hive is okay of a level. There's some parts that ramp up in difficulty and are really, really tedious, but the worst part by far is just these random checkpoints that sometimes get skipped when you're playing through this, and that can be really frustrating when you think you're making a ton of progress, you finally do end up dying, and you're all the way sent back to 20 or 30 minutes earlier in the level. That was really frustrating at times, but otherwise the level's pretty linear and you do have enough close quarters stuff going on. And in this level specifically, there's a lot of different types of grenades that you pick up constantly. They can really make the difference when you're trying to take out the brutes, like the incinerary grenades can just burn up some brutes right away and they're really useful here. And then of course you can just sidestep a lot of the brutes and punch them in the back. And ODST moves smoothly enough for that. The hardest part definitely is the end section of the level after you've done all of the buggers and you manage to survive that whole catwalk mess. The escort part of getting Virgil back up and out of that lowest chasm of the data hive. It's a little bit chaotic, but if everyone spreads out and just kind of tries to take out the enemies on the sides and one person stays kind of in the middle to take out some of the enemies that would directly hurt Virgil, you can clear this stuff, especially since Virgil's dropping shields out, which is a big game changer in a lasso at this point. Yeah, it surprisingly wasn't that bad. And then we had the little room with all of the buggers, which was a little chaotic, but we were able to clear that as well. Thus, clearing out Data Hive and things we knew were feeling pretty good, but we also knew Coastal Highway would be something else. And it definitely did live up to the intensity that we had heard about prior to doing ODST Lasso. We knew that one of the most challenging things that we would face would be here at the end of Halo 3 ODST with Coastal Highway. Coastal Highway in general has this reputation of being just really challenging compared 
comparatively to the rest of ODST. And while we did have a few struggles along the way with ODST Lasso so far, Coastal Highway did prove to be something different. But going into Coastal Highway with the reputation and the ominous scariness that people always talk about when regarding to Coastal Highway, Luke and I were still feeling pretty good, but Dim was so scared he didn't even show up. Actually, he was just asleep or something, and we're running out of time to get this done. So, since Dim had already beaten ODST Lasso and had his achievement, we ended up recruiting the only other person we knew who was online, the world-famous Halo 4 speedrunner and master blaster himself, Zombie343i. So, we were off to try to take on this super ominous level, and starting things off, things weren't really that bad. There's a lot of enemies in the first area, and the main thing you want to do is try to methodically pick them off the best you can, but you can also also, kind of, in general, hide behind some of your AI teammates to do some of the work, which is kind of nice. So this little street section of the level wasn't really too challenging. The real challenge comes in when we actually get onto the coastal highway, and in general, the main mechanic that ends up being troublesome is the fact that you have to keep Dare and her dump truck alive and the enemies are pretty aggressive. Fortunately though, Buck is like a stupidly good shot for being just an AI when he is shooting out of a warthog. And that might be something that ends up coming in handy. Now in general, there are rocket launchers that have infinite ammo on this level if you're playing with the Iron Skull activated, though we aren't really gonna use them because they're kind of actually useless considering the fact that the tilt skull makes them not even break the shields. So the vehicles are actually going to be the big thing that we're going to utilize to take out the enemies. Also, it is worth noting that through this process, we did learn that if Buck stays in the Warthog and doesn't just run off, his Warthog is invincible if no one else is in it and he stays shooting. So that's something good to know and a good way to preserve our vehicles because we're going to need them. So in the first section of the highway, we were feeling pretty confident. This fuel rod grunt kind of, uh wrecked us a few times, to say the least. Zombie took the lead here because he thought he was a pro and he ended up dying a lot. And it might have been a mix because his main strategy was to try to splatter the grunt, which wasn't really the best option. Then later he tried to back off and take an approach of shooting the grunt from further away, which ended up working out a lot better. And then one other interesting mechanic about Coastal Highway is you do have to clear out pretty much every single enemy and then move up at the exact same time into the little door section to get the next checkpoint to load in. Otherwise, you might skip a checkpoint altogether and that's going to be pretty upsetting to have to go all the way back and miss out on a checkpoint. At the second checkpoint, Buck ended up ditching Zombie and I decided to ride with Zombie for a bit and Zombie didn't even know and then we ended up dying. So the next time around, Zombie decided to be on Buck duty and I ended up riding with Luke and we just did the best to cover the forward Warthog. Now, this section was a little bit rough because we actually had to do something. So we carefully cleared out all of the jackals and tried our best not to die because we didn't want to reset any progress we were making here. But all in all, this second area of the highway wasn't too bad. Part three, on the other hand, was a little crazy. First of all, we almost got completely wrecked by a fuel rod grunt, which was great. Also, Buck just really liked our warthog and kept wanting to run in whatever distance he would have to do. Whatever roadblocks were between us and Buck, he would overcome them because he wanted to ride in our warthog no matter what, which was increasingly frustrating when you're trying to get him to specifically ride in one warthog. The main section that is difficult here though is the end area where the buggers come out because they can actually kill Dare pretty easily. However, the tilt skull actually does work in our favor and Dare hangs in there just a little bit longer and Buck is really aggressive with the warthog turret so if you line up the warthog just right and he just starts going ham on those buggers and you kind of hang back and hide, it's a great way to clear this out and hopefully the buggers won't kill Dare fast enough and Buck will do all of the work for you. Okay, highway part four though. This part got increasingly scary as there's a bunch of grunts and they go a little ham with their catch skull. We ended up scuffing a checkpoint because I pushed up a little bit, which was annoying because the next section is going to suck with where we got the checkpoint, but it turned out we missed an enemy anyways, but then we ended up still getting a checkpoint, so we're really confused there. I don't know what was going on, but hey, we were making progress, though in general we kind of got a bad checkpoint here making the next part 
a little bit harder. And then after a process of figuring out who goes in who's Warthog and trying to get Buck to ride with Zombie and Luke to ride with me, it gets even harder when you're trying to do this without seeing gamer tags. We eventually sorted out who is who and in this area, the ghosts are really, really brutal to dare and lasso ghosts definitely don't mess around. So this area took a few tries before we were able to pass it through. In general, we had to be careful to kill all of the ghosts slowly and mostly relied on Buck to do all of the heavier work, which would take forever for him just to sit there and kill a ghost, but it did end up working. Also, side note, we discovered this weird Easter egg or it's an Easter egg we never heard of. Uh, we looked online, we couldn't see anything on it. So it's either a forgotten long lost Easter egg or an undiscovered Easter egg until now. But because we're on Xbox Series X's and the full 4K thing, we can actually read a little bit of what is on this super blurry newspaper. And while we were waiting for Zombie to try to clear a section, we found this newspaper ad that says a grunt adopts a baby. If you look really closely, you can see a grunt and like a baby crawling in front of it with a pacifier. I don't know, we thought that was really, really cool and we were really excited about it. Meanwhile, Zombie was dying on the whole lasso thing. Okay, so we were actually stuck at this part for a really, really long time. This was definitely the pinnacle, probably, of our lasso experience here because in general, with ODST, this section was just rough. It was a constant barrage of just either dying or dare dying. So we ended up kind of trying to tag team our push up here to make sure we all had the best chances at surviving. Luke and I drove up at the same time as Zombie and Buck. And we ended up grabbing the second Gauss Hog, which ended up making a really, really big difference because now at this point, Buck had finally jumped into the first Gauss Hog. So us now having two of those was good. And even though we had to kind of rely on player shooting the Gauss Hog and also Buck, having the two cannons shooting at the same time was definitely way better than what we were trying to do or we were trying to hide and just hope Buck did all of the work. Because obviously Buck just couldn't do it here. Eventually we were able to kind of draw the fire away with the Banshees and make some progress here so that Dare wouldn't just get destroyed instantly. And we were able to get past this even though it was incredibly frustrating. By the next part of the highway, we finally did get to the tank, which is really, really Really nice and for the most part we just kind of moved slowly with the tank when you get to the sixth part of the highway this is when you have phantoms flying overhead and if you shoot them down it actually lessens the amount of enemies you'll encounter in the final firefight and all in all we did pretty good we managed to take out four of the ghosts with a little bit of chaos because two of the ghosts actually landed on the highway and started shooting at us and that wasn't expected uh, it was a little chaotic but we did take them out meaning we would only have to deal with two of them in the final firefight so after struggling our way through coastal highway which rightfully so wasn't a walk in the park the final firefight section was a little bit interesting the main strategy here was to give dare a rocket launcher and hide in the back room with virgil and just hope for the best possible and maybe stick our heads out occasionally when we get bored and pick off enemies but that would be some risky business now honestly in general this final firefight section just was a time drain it was just a whole lot of us making progress very slowly because Buck and Dare have the catch skull enabled and they'll just lob grenades forever. And slowly but surely they will start picking off enemies and then one of us would die and we'd have to go back and wait forever. That wasn't really that fun. There was this very interesting moment where Dare got stuck with some of the hunters and it just looks like a brutal event going on right here where they're just fighting in this corner for a minute. It was really funny to watch just seeing how the AI who's invincible fights up against the hunters. Dare didn't even make any progress in actually killing the hunters, but nonetheless, it, it was interesting to watch. And for the most part, we just hid in the room. These hunters kind of felt like this final big boss fight before we could clear ODST Lasso, but we eventually did kill them. And then a bunch of brutes come in. I mean, a ton of brutes, right when we thought we were done. I mean, we knew there'd probably be a couple of brutes, but we didn't realize it was a whole armada. <laughs> of brutes when you're in lasso and this one was also really rough because it was another one of those instances where we would kill a couple of them hide and then we would die maybe the brute would rush in and kill one of us and we couldn't kill it quick enough but eventually after just playing this forever and ever we did manage to get all of the brutes mostly just back smacked and killed and i promised zombie i'd give him a little bit credit for actually back smacking some of the brutes but from there we did manage to clear out the end of coastal highway get picked up by that phantom and boom this level and campaign was actually completed and 
All in all, with how little time we have left now to get every single achievement across Master Chief Collection before Halo Infinite's final release comes out, we're feeling good, but we still have one more lasso to go and quite a few achievements we still have to pick up. So we definitely were feeling hyped, but also we're feeling the intense pressure of now getting to the point where we are actually really close to completing everything, but Halo 3 could be this massive roadblock depending on what the difficulty looks like. And just from our experiences on Sierra 117 in Halo 3 Lasso, it's definitely not a walk in the park or a breeze like some parts of ODST Lasso was. So it's going to be interesting to see how this ends up going. But that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.